Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on Google Play Game Services, or GPGS for short. This video will be a series where we go through all the different aspects of GPGS and how you can implement them into your project. In this first video, we're going to be looking at authentication, and we won't actually be writing any code ourselves. We're going to be taking some from a GitLab repo. I think this is important because most people arrive at the decision to use GPGS because they've made a phone game and they think it'd be fun to add it in. Uh, and really, you've probably never used any of the services outside of Unity before. So it's good to understand the entire ecosystem and taking away the element of coding just makes it much easier because you're trying to learn the concept rather than the specifics. In future videos, we'll be writing our own code for each of the services, but in this one, it's just a test and to show you how it all works. On top of that, Google generally change their UI most years. Uh, so if you're following an old tutorial, it probably won't work anymore. So it's really good for you to understand the concepts because the concepts will at least help you to understand what the next step is. Now, a little bit of housekeeping before we get stuck into it. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome. My name is Flavain. I do videos on game development and Unity with a focus on understanding the code and how to adapt it into your own game rather than just copying from a template I've created. If that sounds interesting, shoot me a subscribe and check out the rest of my content later. This video in particular will be quite long, so I'll be placing in the description different times for where I approach different concepts. But I would highly recommend, if you're going through this for the first time, just understanding everything from start to finish. Uh, and then if you have to come back to anything, maybe just skip through to the parts that you need. Also, I'll have the URL of every website that I'm talking about in the description as well. Okay, let's take a high level look of what we're gonna be using when we connect with GPGS. This is gonna be broken down into three parts primarily. Firstly, we're gonna have the Unity 3D Gaming Engine. Hopefully everyone's already familiar with this. It's where you should have coded your project. Uh, so we won't really touch too much on this one. The second is a web application that Google publishes called Google's Developer Console. For those of you which have published an app to the App Store, you'll already be familiar with this. For those of you who have never seen this before, this is the platform where you'll upload your application once your game's ready to be published to the Play Store. Just a note here, because I'm not gonna be publishing this game, I'll only be doing what's absolutely necessary to test the game services. Also, if you don't have a Google Play Developer Console account yet, I think there's a one-time fee of about $80. Uh, that will cover you for any games you wanna publish in the future. I don't think there's a limit on it uh, or any window of time. Uh, so it's just a one-time fee, which is quite nice. The UI in this application has also changed very frequently. I think it's changed on me maybe five times in the four years I've used it. And every time it seems completely different, but eventually you find out all the same information's there. It's just in different little sub menus. The third application is the Google Cloud Platform. This is the one most people won't be familiar with, but it is where we store all of our credentials for our keys. And also it allows our API calls to be generated and also tracks them. So how do these three interact? Well, we start off with our project in Unity. We build it to create our game and then we put that onto our device. When we run the game on our device, it then attempts to connect to Google Play Game Services. The developer console holds all the configuration to ensure that when we're making a request, it's a legitimate request that's coming from a valid user. It then passes it on to the Google Cloud Platform, which connects us with that configuration data and sends it back to the phone with the information. To be honest, that's my understanding of it. Uh, it's close enough and it's high level enough that you understand why each piece is important. Okay, so we've got a blank scene in Unity. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is jumping over to our GitLab repo here. I'll have a link to this in the description. But basically this GitLab repo gives us two Unity packages that are very important to us. The first is inside of current build. It is called the Google Play Games plugin and whatever version it's on currently. We're gonna download this package and the second thing that we're going to grab is the samples, the smoke test. Now, the smoke test sample app, it basically just has leaderboards, connectivity, uh, friends. I think it has events, uh, achievements. But effectively, it allows us to test our, our code. So we're going to be grabbing this smoke test unity package. Now, I've already got both of these. That's uh, the Google Play plugin, and this is the smoke test package. And I'm gonna be just dragging this over to the side and we'll be dragging in these packages. Before we do that, I'm going to be just change over to the Android platform. And an important note here, because this is using the developer console for Google, this is for Android, not for iOS. And we are gonna switch platform. Okay, so we switched over to Android. I'm gonna close that down and we're gonna drag in our Google Play package first. When you drag them in, it basically just imports the package. You could also go through, I think it's window and then import package and custom package, but I just find that easier. 
Import everything, don't bother excluding anything out of it. Okay, it's saying it's now ready to use. And keep in mind here, we're not gonna be looking through a lot of the code, we're just gonna be looking at how we can get the authentication service running because it is quite a lengthy process and the future tutorials will be going through the code on these. Okay, once you pull in your Google Play, we'll ask to do an auto resolution for some dependencies, just click enable. <clears throat> And interestingly for me, this always breaks uh, every time at two seconds on the very first time it does it. And later on in the project, we import some other things and it just resolves successfully the second time. So I think it's just my Gradle that has an issue. I've made some changes to some environment variables that may be what's impacting it, but it won't impact the project itself. So I'm just going to clear that and not worry about it. And we're going to drag in our second one, which is the smoke test unity package. Just import everything again. This is actually your scene and the specific code for the project. Okay, so let's just quickly have a look at this test scene here. So we've got our test scene here. It's all drawn at runtime. So there's not actually a lot to see inside of here, uh, inside of the project, but if we hit play, we can see it brings up some authentication methods. And once you authenticate, it brings up a separate menu of different things you can unlock. If you, even when we finish this tutorial, if you click authenticate simple when inside of the Unity editor, it will fail uh, simply because it needs to run on an Android device. It can't run in the Unity editor. When you click authenticate, it will just give you a fail to authenticate with failed. And later on, if you've also got some steps wrong on your phone, it will likely give you failed to authenticate with canceled. It can be difficult to find, uh, but just make sure that you follow the steps as closely as you can is probably the only piece of advice I can give you. This really does have to be quite specific. Because of the bad error handling, it has taken me uh, a day or two to fix some of these issues. But if you follow everything that's in here, it will work on your phone, which is good. Okay, so let's set up the rest of the Unity environment now, and then we probably will be working inside of our web browser for the rest of this. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna to go to our build settings. We're gonna remove the sample scene because that's the starting scene of Unity, and we're gonna drag in this test scene from the smoke test. Once we've done that, we are going to go to player settings. Inside of player settings, I'm just gonna change this default company to be Flavane because we'll need a package name later on. You can name this anything that you'd like, that's fine you'll notice that it updates this.com here and it will also run a dependency and this time it works. So, hooray. <laughs> that might've run for a while. You probably just have to leave it to finish and it should succeed this time without any errors. Uh, we're also going to go to API level 25. I think API level 25 is currently the lowest to publish an app on the Play Store. This isn't necessary if you aren't actually publishing really. If you're just doing testing, I don't think the API level matters, but if you go too high and don't have the API level installed, you'll get an error. So I know I have 25 installed, so I'm just gonna put this to 25. We're also gonna change the scripting backend in here to IL2CPP. That allows us to tick this ARM64. So it builds the game in 64-bit. Very important because you can't publish anything that isn't supported by 64-bit now on the Play Store as well. Once again, we're gonna go through our resolving dependencies. And that again should finish without any errors. In the publishing settings, you'll notice that we're using the debug key here. Now this is because we're gonna be testing it on a game that is not published. So because I'm just uploading it to the Play Store but not actually publishing the game, I need to test with a debug key. In the past, I think last year or so, they forced you to use what was called an upload certificate. That doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so now we use our debug key. I'll show you how to get all the information for this, but an important differentiation, if your game is already published on the App Store, you wanna be using either the one that's inside of Google Play, they, I'll show you where it is later on, but also you could use your own custom key store and pull the SHA one from there. A bit of that probably didn't make sense, but it will but as we get later into this tutorial. It's just a, a good thing to highlight now because it does cause a lot of headaches if it gives you an error. Okay, so we will come back to Unity towards the end of this, but that's all we're gonna be setting up for now. And we're just gonna minimize Unity and jump into our browser now. We're also done with our GitLab URL. I would recommend if you get stuck on any of these steps, read these readmes. Um, this one's quite short, but the one on the homepage here, this readme here has pages of information, which takes a very long time to go through and understand. It doesn't include everything that's covered here. Um, there were a few steps that I had to work out on my own, but it definitely is a good checklist of have I done X, Y, and Z. 
so if you do get stuck, I would recommend reading this. I'll close that down for now though. And now we've got my Google Play Developer Console. So I'm going to start by creating a new app. I'm just going to name this app uh, my GPGS test. And it is going to be a, we'll mark it as a game. It will be free because that will allow me to do it straight away. And then we accept our two conditions and click create app. Okay, so it will take you to the dashboard. This is the way the current dashboard works. But the only part that we're really going to be working in here is inside of this gameplay services area. So it's inside of grow gameplay services, setup and management, and we're going to be looking at configuration. It's going to ask, does your game already use APIs? Ours doesn't. So we'll click no. It fills out my name and I'm just going to click create. Okay, once it takes me here, it gives me a project application and a properties section as well as a credentials. We'll start with the properties. We're going to go edit properties and we're going to enable saved games in here. If you were publishing a real game, you would be filling out a lot of this or a lot of this would actually be pre-filled already uh, because your game's already published, but you can skip all of this except the start information and we're going to go to save games and just make sure it's turned on. That is because this APK that we're going to be building does actually use it. So it will, or it will limit some of your services if you don't turn it on. That's it for properties, exit configuration. And now we've got our credentials section. So we are going to be configuring an OAuth consent screen. Now the beauty of this is that because these are obviously both owned by Google, it will create a project inside of here if you don't have one already. Um, so I'm gonna go configure OAuth consent screen and just click, this is a link to the cloud platform. I've already got it open, but you could just click that URL. I'm gonna click done. And now we're gonna go into our cloud platform here. I'm gonna select a project, click down to all, and it's got my GPGS test here that it's created. Click into that. Now this is the project that was just created. There's quite a lot of information inside of here. We don't really need any of this stuff. The only thing that we're gonna need is our APIs and services. So if you click that hamburger, you can go APIs and services and dashboard. Or if you're on the dashboard, you can generally just click this API here and go, go to APIs overview. Now in your Google Play developer console, you'll see here it has create credentials. So what it's saying is in order to be able to connect, it needs an OAuth consent. And that OAuth consent is built inside of this API section under the credentials. Now, if I go to create a credential immediately, what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, you haven't set up your consent screen. So we're gonna need to configure that first. That is this tab. If you've already got an API in here, it's likely already set up, but for me, it's not. This is a brand new account. So I will go configure con consent. We're going to make this as an external. I believe, I can't click internal, but it's, uh, you're not a Google Workspace user, so that's fine. I doubt many of us will be. So we're gonna go external for this and create. Then we're gonna get our app name. Our app name will be the same name as our project that we've got here. So I'm gonna grab my GPGS test name here. Just copy it, paste it. Support email will be the support email that your account is logged into most likely. And the only other thing that we need to fill in here is our developer email address and hit save and continue. It then brings us to step two, which is our scopes. Now, because I'm doing a tutorial and I'm not actually gonna be using this in production for anything, I don't really worry about what's sensitive and what's not sensitive. Um, effectively, what you're doing in this screen is you're limiting what this OAuth is actually allowed to access. Uh, in my case, I am happy for it to access everything. If you're doing a production application, I would recommend doing the learn more, read about what you don't want to give people access to and do want to give people access to and set that up appropriately. But for me, I'm just going to click save and continue. Then we are going to add some test users. I will add my flavane at gmail.com and I will also add my other email address and click add. Now I've got two testers in here. I will click save and continue. I think for some reason it gives me... Oh, okay. All right, never mind. You, you may not even need to set up those testers at all, but it's already done, so that's fine. We'll go back to our dashboard now. And we've finished the consent screen. So let's go credentials. And now we can set up a OAuth2, which is what we're needing. So I'm gonna go create credentials create OAuth client ID. And the type that we're gonna be building is an Android. 
and I will just name this one debug key. Now I'll show you why I'm naming this debug key a little bit later, but for now, we're gonna grab our package name. Now our package name is the package name that we had in Unity. So inside of that player settings area, I set up in, I think it was other settings. Yep, package name. And we're just gonna copy this entire package name. Your package name is generally com.something. the name of your game. So it will be com .your company the product name. And it is has no spaces in it. We'll paste that in. And then it's asking for an SHA-1 certificate fingerprint. Now this was very confusing to me when I had only ever really used Unity before, but an SHA-1 fingerprint is basically just a unique identifier that you're saying that this auth is going to use every time it tries to connect to something. So if you wanted to put it very simply, you could think of it as a password. If it receives any requests with something that isn't the SHA-1 that I've said it is, then it's going to then say, this is not a legitimate request, so I'm not gonna do the action. They don't have consent to do it. But if I put in the correct SHA-1, it's gonna say, okay, anything that comes from this is a legitimate request, I will let this go through. Okay, so how do we get this? Well, it says the recommended way to get this is by getting using the key tool to then find your debug or production key store and get the SHA-1 out of that. Now it says the way to get this is by using the key tool command. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this and we'll talk through it as we go. So what we're gonna be looking at is because I'm publishing this with my, remember I showed you a little bit earlier, my debug key, inside of that debug key is actually the SHA-1 that it wants me to give it. And then anything that gets built with this debug key will be authorized to then use it. If I were to build it with a different key, I would either need to create a brand new OAuth client and authorize that key, or it will reject it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we need to find where this debug key is stored, and then we need to search it. For most people, your debug key is going to be C drive, users, the user you're logged in as, and the .android folder. Inside of .android, you'll see this debug key store here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and type in CMD, which is command prompt. I'm gonna open that up, drag it down a little bit, and we're gonna paste in that key tool that was on, that I copied from this cloud platform. And then you can see here it says key tool, which is the command, and then it's got some parameters that it's passing in. Now the parameter that is not a real parameter at the moment is this part here. So it says path to debug or production key store. We're gonna replace that with this directory that we've got here. So I'm just gonna space across to it, backspace this out. I'm gonna click on this, copy, paste it in, and then we also need to give it the specific key store. So we're gonna say dash debug dot key store. So it's key tool, key store, the location that you're in, dash list, dash V. Hit enter on this, and it will ask for a password. Because this is your debug key store, in Unity it actually doesn't have a password, so you can just hit enter again without typing anything in, and it will give you all this information. Now I've grayed out a lot of this because uh, they are unique fingerprints, so I don't really want anyone else grabbing these. It's just good practice, but I'm gonna grab the SHA1 and I'm gonna copy that. I'm then gonna go back to my cloud platform and I'm gonna paste that in here and then click create. This then outputs a OAuth client created and gives me a client ID that I can copy. And I need to put that back into my Google Play console. So I'm just gonna click refresh on this and we're gonna say add credential. I don't think I'll even need to paste this in because these two apps are connected, it will just know which one it is. So just starting at the top here, we're creating this for Android. My name should already be filled out. Enable anti-piracy, this is set to off originally. And if you're doing a test like I am here where I don't have this published to the app store, this needs to be set to off. What would happen if you were to turn this on is it would say any app that is requesting this that is not found on the Play Store will be rejected. So you can't create a custom application to then hit this. It needs to be something that's published to the App Store. It's, it's effectively a further security mechanism, but because I'm not publishing this, I'm gonna leave this as off. If you go to production, I would definitely recommend turning this on. You don't want random applications that aren't yours connecting to this. Uh, just something to keep in mind. 
and then authorization. So if I click this little drop down, it will pick up my debug key that I created in my project. Okay, and we're going to save changes. Then we're gonna go out of configuration. So if we scroll down now, we can see that it's got my GPGS test and it's got some information, the package name, and it says it's in draft. That's fine, it's draft is okay. So that's basically the cloud platform side of this done. We don't really need to use this for anything else except for grabbing this ID that we've already generated a little bit later on. But we're now gonna switch our focus to setting up the rest of the configuration inside of here. And the reason why we're gonna have so many steps in here is because the smoke test application that we're using, it has some specific, inside of its pre-built code, it has some specific achievements it's expecting us to have created. So I'm gonna go through and create that. If I were to reopen the GitLab that I had before, and I were to go back up here to the samples, to the smoke test, and in that readme, it'll tell you here, okay, make sure you've got these achievements created. And there's some specific uh, requirements for each of these achievements. That's only because you wanna actually be able to test all the different functionality. So I'm gonna go through and create that now. The first we're gonna do is the achievement to reveal. So we'll go back into our developer console. I'll go down to achievements and I'm going to create an achievement. Now, obviously in your game, if it's a legitimate game, you're gonna be creating a whole host of your own achievements. This section won't really be relevant, but to be able to test our app, we're going to have to create this this way. Thankfully, they are quite easy to create. Achievement to reveal, so this is a hidden achievement. Then we're just gonna say this is a hidden achievement and click save as draft. Back to achievements. We're going to create a new achievement. It wants us to create achievement to unlock, which is a visible achievement. Make sure this is spaced correctly as well. Uh, it's revealed in this case. So I will just be happy with hitting save as draft. Back to achievements again. Create another one. I think there's four of these in total. Achievement to increment. So this is visible and it's incremental and has 10 steps. So paste it in, get rid of any spaces. It's incremental, it has 10 steps and it is visible. Save as draft. And then in here we have a hidden incremental. So it's incremental and is hidden. We'll also set the steps to 10 in this case. It doesn't tell you in there, but that's fine. Make this incremental, we'll give it 10 steps and we'll make it hidden this time. Then we're gonna save this one as draft. Back to achievements. So the next thing it wants us to create is a leaderboard and we they want us to name it leaders. Now they do actually get the names wrong in here. So later on when we import this all into Unity, we're gonna be making some changes uh, just to correct the names in here to what we're actually creating, but it's neither here nor there. So we'll just copy this leaders, go back into here. This time we're gonna create a leaderboard create our very first leaderboard, call this one leaders. I don't need to change anything on this. We're just gonna save draft. Go back to leaders. It wants us to now create an event and it wants us to name it smoking event. So we'll go events, create a new event, smoking event. No spaces on either side, that's good. Don't need to change anything here either. Hit save. And exit out of that. I think that is everything, yep. Okay, so now let's jump back into our achievements window. And you could be in any one of these windows that you've created something for, but you'll see up the top here, there's something called get resources. Now what this is, is basically an XML file of all of the information of each of these achievements, events, and leaderboards. So if I click get resources here, it gives me a whole bunch of information. You can see here that in each of these, I've got my package name, and I've also got the name of the achievement that I've created inside of here. And then I've got the name of the event, and I've got the name of the leaderboard as well. If you were to add a whole lot of new achievements, you would need to re-grab this information. Uh, but for now, it's quite simple. We're just gonna copy this, close out of that, and we're gonna go into Unity. Inside of Unity, because we've imported our Google Play plugin, 
we're going to go window and you'll see this Google Play Games uh, menu. If you don't have that, it's because you didn't import the very first step, which was this Unity package. So just grab that Unity package, import it, and you'll see this window gameplay services. So we're gonna go setup, we're gonna set up an Android. Now inside of this window, it wants us to paste in the XML that we got here. So that's everything that I just copied before. And it also wants this client ID. Now that client ID is from our cloud platform and it's this client ID that we created for our key. I'm just gonna click copy there, go back to my game and paste it in there. The final piece that it asks for here is that inside of this, it asks you to call the constants class name smoketest.gps.ids. Now, the reason why it asks for this is because that is the, the namespace that we're using inside of this project. If you were using a different namespace in your project, obviously it wouldn't be smoke test in that case, but we will go into here. I'll just replace this. So smoketest.gpgsids and click setup. And congratulations, you've successfully configured your Google Play games. I'm gonna click okay here. It resolves some dependencies for me again, and then it gives me a bunch of errors. And now this is what I was talking about a little bit before, where I was saying that it's, when we created our names here, they aren't actually the names that were inside of the pre-built project, but that's okay. Uh, we can just correct these super quickly. So we'll open up Visual Studio, and inside of Visual Studio, you'll see this has got a few errors. It's just where it's saying leaderboard, underscore leaders, underscore in, underscore smoke testing. And if you click on this GPGS ID and hit F12, you can see here that the leaderboard we actually create is called leaderboard underscore leaders. So I'm just gonna copy that. Go back to this leaderboard GUI. The easiest way to do this in for all of them is just double click on this so it highlights it. Go control H, paste in your leaderboard leaders in here and just hit enter a few times and it will have replaced everything. Nice and simple. No errors left on this one. I can close down my leaderboard one. And I can also see that I've still got two more errors and that is in the achievement area. Where did they disappear to? Yeah, achievement area. So double click on that. We're gonna do the same process again. F12 on this. We are looking at the hidden incremental achievement. So we're grabbing our hidden incremental, which is our second one. Copy that. Double click, replace this, hit enter twice. And we've replaced those two, save, close this. We can close out of our code as well because we're done with that now. And now we have no more errors in our project. And remember, as I was saying before, even though we've done all of the setup here, this still won't work inside of Unity Editor. If I click play now and I click simple authenticate, it will just fail immediately. And remember that is because we're doing this inside of the Unity Editor and we're not doing it on an Android device. We have a few more steps to set up and then we'll look to put it on our device, test it and make sure everything works. So I'm gonna go window, we are going to go Google Play Games setup and we're gonna set up nearby connections. You don't necessarily need this, but because this project does use it, uh, it's just easy to have it set up and it's very, very quickly. All it's asking for is the package so I'm gonna grab that package name again very quickly, which was in other settings, package name, copy this, paste that, set up. That one is done as well. And the very last step that we cannot forget is that inside of the Google Play Developer Console, you need to apply certain testers because this is not in production there's currently no testers for this project, which means that for gameplay services specifically, if these testers aren't added, it will just give you the error canceled. This killed me for about three days. So uh, definitely make sure you add some testers to this. So I have got myself added in here and I'm also going to add in my Flavane because my phone sometimes decides it's gonna to connect to a different user. Uh, so I'll click add. And so I've got my two email addresses in here. That's just because my phone uh, has two Google accounts hooked up to it. Uh, and so I've got my testers in here. And now what we can do is we can look to build our game. So this should be everything set up. We're now just testing to make sure it works. So we're going to go file, build settings, and we are going to build this for the first time. So I'm gonna go build and it's fine to 
put here. That's okay. I'm just going to build test one and save. Okay, so when that eventually finishes, it should open up the location. Now we've just got to move this over to my phone. The easiest way to do this is just connecting your phone via USB. Go to your phone and just put this file in a location. I'll just grab that and I will put it in my download folder on my phone. And now I've got the APK on my phone, which is the installer package. So close that down, close that down. I can close down Unity for now and hit clear and shift over to my phone. Okay, so over here on my phone, hopefully the quality is not too bad. We're gonna to go to my files. I'm gonna grab that APK that I just installed, hit install, install anyway, and open it up. I don't worry about sending anything, that's fine. And so now we've got our gray screen here and our authentication options. I'm just gonna click authenticate simple we can see here that it brings up Google Play services and it connects. So that sent my API request, it connected and it was successful. Now I'm gonna jump over to achievements and I will say achievement revealed. And hopefully, I think it's unlock, there we go. And so it unlocks an achievement, which is great because that's the achievement to unlock, which is the one that we set up a little bit earlier. Uh, we can also check our events and I can say fetch events there is the one event that we've got down the bottom. I can say, oops, sorry, fetch events. Increment event. We can see it was currently set to zero. I might just increment it and then fetch it again. And now it is set to 20. If I increment it again, fetch event, we can see it's set to 30 now. So that works, that works successfully as well. Okay, so then I will hit leaderboards. I will go post a score and I will show the leaderboard UI and I can see there that my score has been posted, which is great. Back and I will sign out. Okay, so in the next tutorials, we'll look at breaking down each of these services and how they actually connect, how they work, how they post scores, uh, a bit more of the documentation about them, write our own version of these as well. Uh, I think that's important so that we actually understand what we're doing. And hopefully this helps you to implement in your own project. Please guys, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and leave me a...